Welcome to RC Pile on TV. I'm Don Stegall, and this video is about the Proud Bird EF1 by Great Plains. It's available through Tower Hobbies. I've had a couple sitting in the box for a couple of years, but I've been flying other planes and haven't had a chance to get to them. The Proud Bird EF1 is an ARC. It has a wooden fuselage per the NMPRA EF1 specifications, but they allow molded parts. It has a plastic molded canopy hatch. It has a fiberglass molded cowl. And for wing fillets and the cheek cowl fairings into the wing, it has plastic pieces that fit into the cheek cowl. The belly pan mounts on the bottom of the wing and bolts on with the wing bolts. I'm going to be making fiberglass parts for the wing fillets and the belly pan, possibly even the hatch. And there are two pieces that are parts for the cockpit that in my opinion would be nicer as fiberglass as well. Those may become available as aftermarket parts through stigallhobbies.com. This airplane, even though it's an ARF, is capable of winning almost any EF1 race. In fact, it has won the AMA Pylon Nationals, and many people have had success with them. I've seen them fly. And I've seen them sitting ready to fly, but I haven't ever put one together. So this is going to be my first experience at actually putting this plane together. It's a very nice looking kit. Jim Allen, who designed the Proud Bird EF1 and the Quick V6 Quickie 500 for Great Plains, is a friend of mine and has given me some hints and tips on things to be aware of when I put it together. It comes with a very detailed manual. As with most things like software and other airplanes, people find out things that make the assembly even easier and better. It comes with this nice decal sheet, and I'm sure I'll be putting the Proud Birds on the side of the fuselage of mine. And I'm also going to get vinyl graphics cut by Jim. He's got some nice color schemes. And Kirby's custom vinyl graphics has some nice color schemes as well. The landing gear mounts in the wing in two halves. And it has fiberglass wheel pants that have molded in pockets to hold the position of the wheel pants on the landing gear. The wheel pants staying in the proper position is not a problem. My field behind my house is kind of rough, so I'm going to find out just how well the wheel pants will hold up. I'm perfectly willing to buy some extras if I have to tear them up because Great Plains is great at part supply. The cow is very reasonably priced. The all the, all the replacement parts for this plane are very reasonably priced. So now I'm going to do a quick tear down of the kit so you can see what it looks like. First is the wing. It has torque rods and one servo hole. I sometimes use dual aileron servos. I'm not sure there's room to use dual aileron servos in this plane. It also has the mounts for the landing gear pre-recessed, and all you have to do is bolt it in. The ailerons have torque rods and are CA hinges. So if you wanted to strip this wing, you easily could. The wing is joined by carbon fiber tube, and you do glue the wing together. 
there's a locating pin at the back and when I tried to just stick it in it was a tight fit and you don't want to draw it that hole I would just round the edges of the little carbon fiber pin a little but you can see it's got a nub at the front of the wing that holds it in place. The hatch is held on with rare earth magnets. You can see the place here. And I would imagine that what you do is put the rare earth magnets in place, get the canopy set in the right place, and then glue them down. I have I read the manual, but I don't remember that particular process. On the cow, one thing Jim told me is that you should not force the cow over the wing fillets. And it's possible to get the wing fillets in place in a way such that you can't get the cow push back properly. There are a couple ways of solving that. If you happen to, to have the cow sticking too far forward, you can use a motor spacer to move the motor forward just a little bit. It won't hurt the CG. But don't try forcing the cow or grinding the wood to get the cow to go further back. This is where I recommend a deviation from the instructions. I think it would be much easier to get the wing together, glued together, and to get the wing mounted and to trim the wing fillets, get the cowl on, figure out your motor mounting, now you have to drill holes for in the firewall to mount the motor on this. It's made so it can adapt to a number of motors so it does not have pre-drilled motor mount holes. But it's no problem to drill them because you can easily access the back of the firewall from both the top and the bottom. But you'll want to use a screw to pull your line nuts into place. This is another thing that Jim told me. Looking at the plane from the rear, what you want to do is move the motor over about 330 seconds of an inch and then use a couple of 440 washers on the motor mount to put in two to three degrees of right thrust. You only need to do this if you're going to be racing the airplane. It flies just fine with no right thrust. But a lot of the EF-1 guys have found that a little bit of right thrust keeps the nose from dropping in the turns. These things turn in that APC 8x8E, which is the required propeller for EF-1. It's putting out a whole lot of left pulling tendency torque and... Um, with these planes also being a little heavy for the wing area, it will drop the nose and the turns. You can use right rudder trim or you could use rudder mixing, where if you pull up, it adds a little right rudder. So there are a lot of options there. If you didn't build yours with some right thrust, um, you, if you did build it without right thrust, you could always plug the holes and re-drill new holes and try putting some right thrust in it. The rudder and fan just glues in a slot and it's CA hinges. The elevator and the stab use a joiner and you have to put that in when you're putting the stabilizer in. So you have to put the stabilizer in with the elevators not mounted because as you slide it in, you need to put the wire in and then glue on the elevators. This is a very high quality airplane. There's actually one in real flight 
and I have a customized version of it with two degrees of right thrust and I also have one with three degrees. I'm going to publish those on the ProudbirdEF1.com page that will be on RC Pro at least initially. But ProudbirdEF1 and PBEF1.com will take you to additional resources and tips, color scheme information, and other things about this airplane. I know I'm going to have fun building it, and I know I'm going to have fun flying it, and I think you will too. Even if you're a sport flyer and you enjoy fast, sleek airplanes that look sharp, you'll enjoy this airplane. You can use a smaller battery pack, but I recommend you go ahead and use a four cell EF1 compatible battery. And if you want to turn a bigger prop, you can get a Brodak 920 kV motor that doesn't put out as much power as an EF1 motor, and that would be a very good sport motor for this airplane. The Rimfire by Electrofly is a great EF1 motor. So if you're going to race, consider the Electrofly EF1 motor. For an electronic speed control for this airplane, I recommend the Castle Creations Phoenix Edge 75 Lite. The non-light version has a heat sink on it and it's fairly heavy. It weighs at least an ounce more and you don't want to add the extra weight up front on this airplane. The cool thing about the Castle Creation series is that they have a data logging feature. So you can download information from a flight or multiple flights depending on how dense you have the recording of the flight information to your computer and you can see the battery current draw, you can see the RPMs. Uh, it's kind of funny when you're racing, you'll see spikes that's in the turns because it's putting more of a load on the motor in the turns and it makes it kind of easy to see what your lap times were too. This plane can be raced on the AMA 540B course that we race Club 40 on. It's around 100 miles an hour. With them pushed to the max, they probably get to a little more than that, maybe 110 to 115. But the average speed is probably about 100 miles an hour on the course. So if you're flying Club 40 or Quickie 25, on the AMA 540B course, this airplane and other EF1s will fit right on the course with it. This is a quality airplane. Great Planes is a great company to order from. Make sure you buy a Super Saver Club membership to Tower Hobbies and save money on your orders and get free shipping on orders over $150. And go out have some fun flying, and eventually we'll see you at the races. Thanks for watching.